Hi. Hey, hey. All right, we got some people coming in. Welcome, welcome. Thank you to everyone coming in a little early here. Okay, so we had over 52 registrants on this event. So we're gonna give uh, some people a little bit of time to join in. Um, we got two minutes to 12, I might go two minutes over. Hope everyone doesn't mind. All right, welcome, welcome. It's 12.01 and I think it's, it's fair to say um, we should start. All right, so welcome everyone to NJ Thrives Thursdays. We hold this every Thursday at 12 p.m. It's a weekly webinar series for New Jersey small business owners. So. I am your host, Christian Pichardo. I am an NJSPDC marketing consultant and CEO at nilamomedia.com. We are America's New Jersey Small Business Development Centers Network. So we are basically a statewide program that is powered by the SBA and partners to help small businesses in New Jersey with no cost small business consulting training and events starting at $0, just like this one, and exclusive small business resources that are mostly only available to our clients. So for today, we're gonna to go over some quick headlines. Uh, we'll jump right into the webinar. 
then we'll have a Q&A towards the end. Now, to start off, here are some small business headlines. Usually we only have one, but there was a lot of stuff happening this week and I wanted to give you guys um, everything. So opening up this first one, basically it's the pre-registration for phase four grants by the NJEDA. This is just basically a reminder that it's due in seven days. Here's the link and I'm gonna post this into the chat for everyone. Um, please save this. And there you go. So that's for everyone there. Now the next one is you have one week left to apply to sell your net operating losses and used research and development tax credits. Um, and that's part of the technology business tax certification transfer program. These names just get longer and longer, don't they? <laughs> um, but here's the page if you want more information. This is for, let's see here, unprofitable NJ-based technology and biotechnology companies with fewer than 225 US employees. So we're gonna go ahead and put the link down there in the chat as well for this one. If you are an NJ-based technology or biotech company, now, the last one is fairly new, I believe, and it's a sustain and serve NJ program. This just came out yesterday, it's phase two of this, and basically it provides grants of 100,000 to 2 million to eligible organizations to support bulk meal purchases from NJ-based restaurants that have been impacted by COVID. So again, we're gonna drop a link into the chat for you guys. Um, so you can get more information on that. So that said, those are your headlines. Now, before we jump into the webinar, three things to keep in mind. Type your questions into the Q&A box. There's going to be a little menu on the bottom of your screen. And uh, there should be a Q&A button there. Just click on there, ask your question there. And we're either going to get to it live uh, during the presentation, depending how much time we have, or we're going to leave it to the end. So um, drop your questions. Two would be to complete a three-minute survey, and that's going to come in at the end of this webinar. And once you complete that survey, you'll be able to get access to the webinar materials, including the presentation by our speaker, which has, you know, all the, the golden nuggets in there, and a link to watch this webinar on demand. And three would be that if you're on this webinar, you're automatically eligible for the Upgrade Your Business Certificate. So basically, um, it's a program we've created where you'll get a certificate if you attend a several, several amount, a certain amount of our webinars. So more info on that at that link there. So without further ado, today's event is brought to you with the speaker, Charles Evans, Director of Business Development at Corporate Turnaround. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us. And um, yeah, let's get this show on the road. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing here. All right, thanks Christian. And let me just uh, open up our screen. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody, uh, Christian, Gorma, Uzma, Juan, and actually the list on the NJSBDC goes much longer than that. So I'd like to thank everybody for the time and the ability to speak with you today. Um, let's see, I'm doing it. Okay, there we go. Christian, did that work out right? Does that look okay? Yep, Okay. That's perfect. Um, so again, my name is Charles Evans and today, I mean, the, the, this title of the webinar is actually really good. Um, what this is all about, I just want to do a little groundwork first. And um, you know that we hear that, you know, countries can restructure themselves, you know, big businesses have chapter 11, and uh, there's all sorts of different ways for people to restructure themselves. And the question comes down to what about small businesses? What about small businesses who are under stress and under pressure. And, um, you know, 
what is there for them? And there are forms of bankruptcy there, and they may not be appropriate. And this is not about bankruptcy. And then there are, and, and they're difficult. Um, and there's chapter 11, and there's even a new subchapter, the chapter 11 lately, and they're still daunting. Um, you need lawyers, things need to be approved. And so what this is, is how does a small business, number one, restructure themselves by themselves? How do they know when they can do it? How do they know when they can get, when they need professional help to do it? And so what I'm going to lay, do is I'm going to lay out a complete program and we're going to do, it's going to go pretty quick. And fortunately, this is all printed in the guide that is available from however you found out about this webinar through whomever your SBDC person is, the guide is free. It's a PDF. It's in color. It's really, really well written. Um, and it's, pro it's proved the test of time. Uh, this has been around a long time. And now I'm also, and just one other thought, if, you know, if you're on this webinar, I've had people come back to me years later and say, you want to know what? I was on your webinar, but it wasn't my business that was in trouble at that time. It was an in-law who had problems with credit cards, or it was someone else had an issue with medical debt or a mortgage or something like that. Because what we're going to do today is we're going to learn about negotiating presenting yourself to creditors, coming to a win-win instead of the hostility and, you know, that exists in the collection world, how to set yourself up for a win-win. And again, I'm going to do step-by-step. -step. We're going to show you everything. So let me move on here. Um, type questions in as we go along. Yeah. Um, and then we'll also answer them at the, at the end. So the first thing I want to do also, the webinar is it's going to seem like it's going slow in the very beginning here for the first couple of slides, but then it's going to go real fast because the amount of information. So what I'm doing here with this first screen is I'm just building a foundation and a couple of these screens I'm going to go slow with, and then you're going to see there's going to be so much information that, um, that you're going to learn a lot today. So the first question is this, is what is debt restructuring? And I'm going to read this slow, and I'm not going to read all the slides, but this is so important. Um, it is the process of negotiating new payment terms with existing creditors. So in other words, we're not adding money. We're not, we're just changing the terms with existing creditors. That's, called, that's restructuring. And that, you know, how do you do it? It's not easy, but we're going to teach you how. Um, and what is the purpose of all this? The purpose is to satisfy your creditors on a budget that you as a small business can afford. And the, the point is this, is that creditors are vital to your business. They lend you money or terms or service or whatever. And you know we need to satisfy them, but satisfy is an interesting word. You know, It has to do a lot with them, it has to do with what you can afford. So let's continue on. And also, you know, let me just say one other thing is this is, you know, this is really for a company that's under pressure and in trouble. There's a lot of benefits to learning all this, but this is not about making your, you know, your balance sheet look prettier than it is. This is, this is serious. So let's continue here. Okay. Now I'm not, I won't read all these, but the answer is, so we're saying what kind of things can be restructured? So the answer is virtually everything. Um, I'll let you read down the list here. Um, things that you might be surprised at. It says secured and unsecured business. That's what we always hear about unsecured, but secured can be negotiated as well. Um, merchant cash advances. These are high interest. I don't know how many people know about this. I'm sure most do, but these are very high interest loans, incredibly high interest with incredible leverage on a small business. They're very scary. Um, uh, I mean, it's uh, the, the documents to sign, but this is the thing where they, you get a phone call and they say, we can have money in your account in 24 hours. Well, yeah, but look at the paperwork. You know, most people don't read the paperwork before they sign. Right. The point is, is that merchant cash advances can be negotiated also. Um, let's see. The only things that Things that are a little more difficult is a truck is difficult to negotiate. 
because it's on wheels and outside and it can be repossessed. But a lot of stuff can't be repossessed. Um, warning signs. Okay, I'm not going to read through all of these. I'll let you read through some. Um, one, two, three, four. The fifth one down is beautiful. Um, I know this one. And I think all of us have experienced this one. So these are the warning signs that you may be in trouble or you may be needing help. This is great. You're paying smaller creditors and not paying larger ones. It makes sense, but the problem is this, is the smaller creditors aren't a threat to you. And the larger ones are. Um, yet it's, so, it's human nature to pay the smaller creditors first and not pay the right. larger ones. So you're paying the ones that aren't a threat and not paying the ones who are the threat. Um, bouncing checks. Here's another one. This last one, we found this over years and years and years. Um, if 90% of your payables are uh, 90 days past due, we found that that's a really good indicator that stress is building and that there are some problems. Um, so what to consider before restructuring? So this means you know, do you want to, are you, are you going to take this on? Do you want to take this on? Do you want to take this on yourself? Um, again, the guide that we have that's free for the SBDCs, it's going to go into much more detail than I'm talk, going to talk about here. Um, it can help you. It can answer all the questions, but still at the end of the day, um, you want to know, are you up to this? Do you want to devote the time? Um, so let's see. I'm just going to focus here yeah, on four, the last two. This takes time. Um, this isn't easy. This takes time. So how much time are you willing to devote to this? And the other thing is this. Are you willing to negotiate? Is it in your DNA? It's actually not in my DNA. I'm not good at it. Um, Quick question, Charles. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so when, when it comes to negotiating, I don't know if you have it later in the slides, but what can you negotiate? So... I'm, I'm assuming, you know, interest rate, right? Yep. Um, what we're going to do is f further down in the presentation, it's interest rate, it's principal. Our goal is to, in this methodology, and you'll see, our goal is to get something which is actually either one debt or many debts that are unknowns with all sorts of interest rates and penalties and all these sort of problems, get each one to a fixed number, no interest. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the principal will be, be less. So that nice. we're really returning a known and unknown into a known because the unknown part is actually pretty scary with all this. Right. Um, okay, so now this gets interesting here. And I don't know if you've ever looked, you've thought about your business this way, but, and these are cute little names that we came up with a long time ago, but they're, they actually are really good. So when you're looking at your business, you want to know which creditors should be restructured, which ones could be, and which ones are vital to the business. I'm going to go into this in a second. And the idea, now I'm going a little ahead here, but the idea is later on when we get to a budget and we're looking at dollars, we're going to restructure all the should be's and then we're going to add every could be in into a math metric and see if the division works to see, does a budget that you can realistically afford work on that. So now, now we're just, now let's go backwards. I'm gonna go back, we're gonna go into detail on the should be's. Um, oops, I went the wrong way. Okay. So again, this is, if you're gonna restructure or you're looking at this or you're considering this as a possibility, the ones that you're absolutely gonna restructure and remember, this is, this is life or death. This isn't about who's your friend. We're saving your business. This isn't about, oh, these guys have been good. You know, this is about survival. So the one, the, the creditors that, that should be restructures are creditors you don't want or need to do business with, that aren't willing to do business with you, that have stopped yeah. giving you credit, are not critical to your survival, or have placed you for collection. Remember, we're, this is about saving your business. This is not about, um, it's about saving your business by coming up with a plan that works for you and the creditors. It's not about, you know, friendships or things like that. This is about saving the business. Could be's. Um, 
creditors that are still willing to sell to you, it may need, you may need to find other creditors um, and restructure rest if, the no, if the money warrants. Um, they could be, that are not pushing for any past due balance. Their products, their product service or equipment may be important, but can be purchased somewhere else. So this is a whole nother group of creditors. These are the ones he thinks that are important, but they also could be restructured. The third group now is the vitals. Um, so th this is obvious, I'll let you read those. Um, and vitals are actually really, really few. There's, at the end of the day, there may be none. It might be um, the PSENG if you need yeah. gas to run furnaces, but we found that they negotiate also. Um, this may be someone with a, uh, a machine that was co-developed that's off location or dies or stamps or something like that. You know, if, if they have something like that, that is the life of your business where you wouldn't restructure them. But the, the point is, is that these days, also with all the vendors out there and all the abilities, there's almost nobody that's a vital. Okay, now. I'm sorry, I'm gonna pause you Charles, yeah, please. for a quick second. And I wanna let everyone know, I know this may be, um, you know, sort of a, 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 a private topic to many people. And I want to let everyone know four questions. If you do not want to put it out into the public, into this webinar, feel free to send it to me directly into the chat. So when you go into the chat on the bottom, you could click that button there where it says two, you can click on uh, my name there, Christian Pichardo, and it'll send me a direct message. And then you'll be able, I'll ask that to Charles and it'll be a, an anonymous question that way. All right, just wanted to let that. No, it's, it's, um, oh. Christian, that is a great uh, point. I think we got more than one mic open. Okay, um, Christian, great point. Um, actually, you want to know it now, you've caused me to pause, <laughs> but it's right on the same issue. And right, right. people, um, the, the, the point is, is that nobody wants to talk about this. Yeah. Um, people will come to a counselor and not say all this stuff. Right. And the, the main point is that's why we have this webinar and that's why we printed this guide and that's why we exist is because there are so many people in this situation that that are just keep getting cornered and cornered and cornered and the point yep. is is that you're not alone this is happening this happens no matter what's going on let alone there being a pandemic and right. it is that that's one of the things that people learn when they come and they read these things or they talk to us or talk to you is that this is kind of normal and people don't, you know, people, this is, this entrepreneurs are, you know, you, you can't be an entrepreneur and not have a, a, a real strong sense of pride. So absolutely. So Christian, that's a great idea. Um, I love that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. But I just, this is, it's so, it's like going to the doctor and, you know, you go to the doctor and you, you say, my foot hurts. And he says, well, that's why there's a line out the door. Everybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And right. Yeah. No I, I, I want to let everyone, you know, you know, tell me in confidence. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So now, let, all right. So we'll keep moving on. So, how much can you afford each month? So the next slide is going to show you. I mean, we have electronic calculators in the guide. There's a whole page of all sorts of questions and answers um, to come up with this number. But what I have found, and what we have found over the years, is that most small business owners are going to know this answer. Um, from the seat of their pants and just now. Um, so the question is, how much can you afford each month? Um, so what is the most you could afford to pay? Really important word there, consistent monthly basis towards the problem debts, because we're restructuring, we got to have money, we got to be able to offer. How much money will you have left at the end of every month after paying the other obligations except for the problem, your problem debts? So we have calculators again, we have this, you know, but it really comes down to something like this. You know, let's say a small business, let's say they have $20,000 in debt and it's been going, uh, they're paying $20,000 a month to service their debt and they can't afford it. They can't afford it. And then they're running into trouble. The creditors aren't giving them room. 
the 20 and then maybe a collection thing comes and then through restructuring, maybe they'll find out they can handle it. They can turn this into 10 grand or eight grand or six grand or seven grand. So you would then ask the, and the small business owner is going to know then, you know, yeah, based on my whole history in business, I could have, if that whole thing was turned into seven grand a month, I can survive. So now let's keep yeah. going. So in the guide is a, is, a, is a calculator here. We actually have them online. But again, you don't need to do this. Most people will know. But now I'm going to start giving you some numbers. Um, and this is based on, you know, we're also kind of a data company. And we know, you know, what works. And, you know, some of these things, you're going to wonder, where do these numbers come from? But what we have found, so this is a really important number. It's an easy number. We have found that a small business who is under stress and owes a lot of money and is having collection, collections, that if they can afford around $2,000 per month, per $100,000, that they can stay out of bankruptcy and come up with a plan for their creditors. And that number, actually, it's between two, and you're going to see in the next couple of slides, it goes all the way up to eight and 10 percentage. And I'm going to show you where a company fits in. But below that amount of money, you got to start. But if you get below around $2,000 a month per 100, that's when you got to start looking at, that's when you would look at a bankruptcy attorney. I don't think you'd look at them before then. And you know, this is not about using attorneys. This is about getting creditors to work with you. So let's move on here. So now we're going to look at, okay, so we had a couple, uh, so let's go all the way back to the circle with the could be, should be, et cetera. So we're going to add the debts up and we're going to look at what, what can we, what can we afford? And let's use a number of a hundred grand right now. Let's say the, the, the small business has a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt and these numbers can escalate or ex extrapolate up as well as pretty much go down. So let's say you had a hundred thousand dollars in debt that you can't pay. Well, if you can afford 17% per month, that means you could pay it off in six months or less. And this is obvious math. Um, you don't have a problem. This is not, you know, or it's a minor problem. Now, if you have half that amount of money, if you have $8,000 to $16,000 on a monthly basis, you could pay off hundred grand in seven to 12 months, depending on how things go. And we would call that a moderate problem. And this, what we're teaching, teaching here is for the moderate and also coming into this guide, what we're talking about comes into the major. If you can only afford two to 7% per, per month. So in other words, you have a hundred grand in debt and in your heart or through the calculations or talking with your SBDC counselor, you know, you can only afford two to $7,000 a month. Remember you're a hundred and they all want their money. Now, if you're in that area, you, you can consider it clearly a major problem, not, insurmountable and then less than two percent is where even we don't know how to solve the problem because it gets to be too much so now so in other words and now how we're, the question is is okay how do you take two three four five thousand dollars a month and try to show that to creditors multiple creditors who are suing you threatening you whatever and how do you come up with a plan and this is how we come up with a plan what we're going to do is this and this works. We do it all the time. And I want you here to also think, think of yourself, turn the table for a sec second and think of yourself as the creditor. Don't think of, you know, you're, you're the small business, but now turn things around. You're trying to collect from this small business. They're not answering the phone. They're doing this, that, you know, whatever things are bouncing. And then all of a sudden, they're answering the phone and they're sending you this. And I'm gonna give you everything you need to do this. You're sending them a proposal. So all of a sudden you're putting, you are putting yourself on a, the small business. You're literally putting yourself on a silver platter with everything. You're completely differentiating yourself from the hundred other people that they're trying to collect from that day. And you're sending in 
a hardship letter, which I'm going to show you, a business history profile, a payment plan cover letter, and initial repayment offers, Christian, which that sheet is going to answer your question of what you were looking at. So, okay, so now to review, everything's a mess. People are suing. You don't know what to do. You know you have some money. We're going to put together a proposal like this, and we're going to send it to every creditor. When the creditor calls and say, listen, I have a proposal for you. I can send it to you by email. I can fax it to you, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, I'm not going to read all this because I want to be... I want to look at the time. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to write a letter. You're going to describe exactly what's going on. And it's not just COVID. This was before, you know, we, we've been doing this for 20, like I think 23 years and there was two recessions and other things going on. Um, and so your letter is going to explain everything that's going on that put your business in a situation that, of why they're in arrears. Now, we, over the years, we found, you know, first of all, let me just do two, two things. Um, one is you wonder maybe where these numbers come in from. Um, we've, as a firm, we restructured about 14,000 businesses. It sounds like, I, I know it sounds like a huge number. It is. And so we got the data of what worked and then we know what the people were going through. So that's where we can come up with these numbers for you and come up with this. And we found that probably the biggest thing of why businesses are in trouble over the years was that the owner got sick, period, end of story, broke a leg, got sick. That was the number one thing. So that's why we start off you know, uh, with the letter, you know, uh, even divorces didn't do this illness is death in the family. Then, of course, you know, we had the floods of Sandy, which we worked with, with the we worked with the NJSPDC on Sandy. Um, we worked with the Florida Small Business Development Centers on um, the BP oil spills. We went down there and 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 trained all their people. So the um, so here's your list. It's everything. OK, and then any secured loans, lawsuits. So in other words, you're using all the bad information you're creating, you're turning lemons into lemonade. Let's put it this way. Okay. So, so quickly, the, the, Go ahead. The, the purpose of this is just to inform them to sort of get to the human, humanize yourself oh. as a business, right? Uh, you to got your the creditor, word. right? Christian, you got the word. You said, right. human. that's exactly what you're doing because every one yep. of the collection people they have a heart. <laughs> yeah. Right? And they also got a job and they're also yeah. highly trained and they're really good and they're, they're compensated on what they collect, especially if you get in. So, mm -hmm. but every one of them, if you tell them a true and honest story, they are then going to find a way to make it work for both. Because at the end of the day, it costs them money to collect. It costs them yeah. money to sue you. It costs them money to do all these sort of things. And what we want to do is come up with a way to give them money that yep. works. Okay, business history profile. It's in the guide. Um, By the way, where can we find that guide? Um, it's you, um, Chris, Christian, I will email it to you. Um, your awesome. center, you guys have it. It's up on a lot of NJSBDC websites um, and I will get it to you and you should already have it. And I'm going to, I'm sure Juan has it and uh, Uzma has it too. Um, Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so the business history profile. All you're doing is checking off answers here. You know, what happens, rent, this, that. There's financial information, unaudited. You just fill it in, you know, that your sales decline, boom, 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 boom. You sign it, that's part of it. So then we wrote a hardship letter. That should be on your letterhead. We add this business history profile. You can use that right out of it. You can scan it, what have you. Next. Um, and I'm just mindful of the time. We're still doing, we're doing good on time. Okay. So this is a cover letter. And this, we, we purposely did this. We, we don't supply this as text because the last thing we want anyone to do is to 
copy and paste. Because if you notice, there are all the little arrows that say, insert your company name. And we know that if we did that, somebody's going to copy and paste it and you're going to leave, insert your company name. So we want you to write it yourself. Um, and yep. Yep. there's a great, I just want to read a couple of lines here because now, uh, Christian, this is where we were talking about where we're humanizing it. Um, you know, first line, first it, it mentions what's going on, what the debt is, who you are, what the account number is. And it says, as you may already be aware, our company is having difficulty paying you according to terms. Let us assure you that our desire to pay you while, uh, while also satisfying, it's our desire to pay you while also satisfying other creditors. And it says, we understand and agree that you are entitled to what we owe. And then I'll, I'll clip down, I'll, I'll jump down. You are doing an explanation. They actually are, they've lent you money. Now, we're also looking to, re remember, we're looking to reduce principal here and interest and extend terms. That's a byproduct of doing this correctly because you're going to see what happens next. Um, then the next line, this plan was developed to give our creditors several payment options in light of our limited cash flow. Your cooperation is essential. Um, then down at the bottom, we respectfully ask you hold any legal or collection activity. You, you'll be surprised how this works. Now, this is where it gets here, Christian. This is where we're going to. So this is this looks like complicated mathematics. Now, the way we do it on our end is exceedingly complicated with infinite offers and counter offers. But what we've done for a do for the do it yourself guide is. We're breaking this down into five classes. I'll zoom in on this in a second. And this is what we're doing is we're involving the creditors. We're also having them sign our document, which is your document. We're also including legal jargon. So, you know, and I think this is said somewhere else, but you know, you never pay a creditor without something in writing and you never just send them money, especially when you're under stress. So here, this is legal jargon to protect you. Um, so this is, it's broken into five classes. And I'm just gonna focus on the, the first couple here. Um, and what we're doing is we're saying here, this is what's going on. Here's a business history profile. We wanna pay you. We only have this much money a month. And there's a little mathematic magic in here, but it's once you look at it, you realize it's not that complicated. But so there's, so we're breaking it down and say, okay, creditor, choose one of these classes of creditors. Um, so let's just look at class A and D for the moment. Oh, let, let me go, I'll zoom in. Um, so let's say, and what happens is creditors pick all different ones of these. You don't know what they're gonna do. It has to do with their, them. And you'd be surprised, you send this out and people circle these and send them back. It's, it's almost, and if they don't, you just bought another month and you try again the next month. So class A, if they pick class A, that means they're willing to accept 16% and that we're gonna lump some Pam and I'm gonna show you how we do that um, in one month after this is authorized. Now this is based on an 8% budget. So you might wonder, well, we're, we're, we're putting together a budget of 8%. Um, so you'll see on the next thing when the, how the money line works. So that's class A. Now class D is anybody who wants to be paid in full, they want 100% on the dollar, will be paid one lump sum payment under this class and will be made one year from the date you sign this agreement. Only principal balances will be paid under this class. And I'll show you the money line on how this works next. And what happens is this, is it's hard to believe, but when creditors are presented sound ideas like this, some of them are gonna choose class D, D, some are gonna choose class C. Some, like the class C may be a vendor who says, listen, I've worked with you, I want you, I've made money on your past, I wanna keep you as a thing, I'll take 64% over you know, uh, seven monthly installments. That would, and I'll go COD in the meantime. All right, let's go look at the money line. Um, so now 
don't get too bollocked up by this. It's a lot simpler. This looks really complicated, but it's not. The idea is on the top are the classes of payments. So let's look at class D. How, you know, in your mind, how would you say this is possible? Well, the point is, is that we gave ourselves a budget of 8,000, but let's say we made a budget of $8,000 a month to pay a hundred grand and everybody's suing you. Well, at the end of 12 months, if you put the $8,000 away, it actually goes into month 13, you've got $104,000. You've got all the money. You could pay them all in a lump sum. How does this benefit creditors? They didn't have to sue you. There's a plan. They kept working with you, blah, blah, blah. And then each other credit, each other class works sort of like that. Class A, okay, 16%. Well, great. You can save a lot of money. Um, you're going to save what, 78%, 76%, um, 74%, sorry. Um, and then, but where are you going to come up with that money? Well, look down in the lower left here. Well, the first month, you're putting away $16,000, I mean, $8,000 a month. Well, in the first month, you're just starting a plan. You're negotiating, you're sending out these letters. And by the end of month two, when one of these may come back, you got the 16, you paid that, you got rid of one creditor, they're gone. The other guy's didn't choose any, you could actually pay all of them by then. Like a hundred, if all creditors chose that, they could all be paid within that. Like, so it doesn't matter which one they do, they can do anything they want. So again, it sounds a little complicated. It's not, and it will come to you. A lot of, a lot of times I find people say, oh, it took me a while, I got it the next day. I understand what you're talking about now. Okay, <laughs> so we're coming, you wanna know what, we're coming to the end. Um, I'm not going to do all of these. Um, I want to let you just, I want you to read these, you know, just kind of read these. Um, numbers four and five. So the first ones are saying, you know, you need, uh, you know, if you're going to do this, you got to put away the, aside the money. Um, number five, huge one. Um, you know, when anybody tries to, does this or starts this the first thing they want to do is they're like i want to settle i want to settle I, the point is is don't try to you know the, the the goal is not to settle it's to buy time you know so in other words you know you call a credit you call a creditor once a month you're calling them um you know we know the ones cut expenses etc now let's go to the next ones um number seven really critical um remember let's go back to the creditors remember we said it's their job they're professionals the collection industry has been around going all the way back to great britain and they have learned ever since it's computerized there's a chance that they know you know if you've got a collector on the line there's a good chance they know what kind of car you're driving that's how good the data is they know what's going on they know it's, you know, they're good. Um, but so in other words, that's, so the point is, is on the other hand, they get to us, they can get to us. And this is where, you know, you know, uh, you know, some collectors can be rude and never sink to their level. If they're unprofessional, blah, blah, blah. The key line, if a collector, collector gets to you emotionally, which is their job and they're trying to do, you lose because then you're going to do something like say, I'll send you a thousand bucks. And here's the problem. You send them a thousand dollars. They can say anything they want over the phone. It's not in writing. They'll come after you the next day for the balance. Um, you know, and let me just, I got uh, just a couple of seconds. Let me just take a veer off for a second on that. Let's, let's talk about if you have equipment. Let's say you have equipment and you use it some of the time and you're behind on it. And this is almost like a, a mistakes that people make. Um, so a collector calls it and they say, I'm coming to take that equipment and you better pay. I'm coming to take it. And then in the back of your mind, you're like, okay, that'll be uh, a weight off my shoulders. I don't really use it that much anyway. Okay. Well, just so you know, the worst decision you could possibly make, and here's why. And this is why 
you know, and the guide will help you through this and your counselor can help you through this. Here's the real thing with that is number one, they can't really come and get it. They need a sheriff. They need even more than that. They need to get through the doors. You can refuse them. And here's why you want to refuse them. If you say, yes, come and take the equipment. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to sell it. They're then going to, let's say, they're going to come back to you for what's called a deficiency balance. It's what they is still owed on the whole lease. They're going to start their collections right over again, as hard as they were before, and you don't have the equipment. So by giving up equipment, you've just really hurt yourself. And now you don't have the equipment. That's why in some of these things, you know, that's why it's, it's helpful to get advice on this. Um, it's leverage. And in this whole thing, and I'm actually, I'm going to close it up, close it up pretty soon. This whole process, your business, your leverage as a small business is money. You don't give it to them under any circumstance. They're already going to come kill you. Your business is in threat. You don't give it to them under any circumstances until you have a plan in place, written to protect you, signed, and then you start paying them. And the byproduct is savings. We find that if you enter a plan like this and do it and work hard, you your balance, you'll probably end up paying maybe 70 grand back on 100. Um, nice. Let's see. Let me just see. Hold on. All right. I got one more second left. Nine, take, take calls from creditors, don't avoid them. Um, uh, 10, obvious. And this is once again, if you can't make a scheduled payment, contact them before they contact you. Express your regret. Um, there you go. How'd I do, Christian? I think we did it awesome. on time. Awesome. No, you did perfect, perfect. So um, yeah, let's, let's see what kinds of questions we have. Um, I know most of them were, were around the guide and we're gonna make sure to, to send that over to everyone. Um, but I do have a question. Anonymous asks, with the 2,000 a month for 100,000 owed that you mentioned, how many years are you saying to pay that off? Well, you could just do them. You could, if you, if, it would just be the you just would do the math. Um, you know, it would be technically four years would be uh, ninety six thousand dollars at 48, uh, 48 months or something like that. Yeah. However, so you could present it to them. But now here's the here's the thing because but you'd want to still present it in different levels and give them alternatives. Um, yeah. Again, you're. You're at, at the two thousand dollars. That's at the very bottom, at the scary level, where you probably need professional help. Here's why. One of the reasons is is that, and if you notice the plan that we presented there, it was basically about a year. It was a year yep. because people, creditors, businesses, and collection agents, they think in the terms of a year. So, in other words, that person in that situation, well, with credit cards, that might work. With, with things that are, you know, but if it's a, if it is a hostile, aggressive creditor that might have, be able to attach a bank account or do things like that, they probably, they, they probably would need to seek professional help or look for more help uh, in that area. Um, but yeah, go ahead. Other questions? I think maybe awesome. I can see these questions too. You, yeah, you might. Oh yeah, yeah there we go. But I like it when you read them, Christian. I get, I'll read them to you. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's see. Okay, so good. from your discovery and working with clients to restructure debt, have you found some creditors more difficult to work with or refuse to change terms slash interest rates? Last year, I negotiated interest rates with my creditors, never been laid on any payments, and all but one was difficult and wouldn't budge on changing the payment date. Yeah, this is a fantastic question. Um, here's the thing. You can't, the, and the question was written really well. And I and uh, remember, this is life or death. The leverage you have is paying. If you're still paying or making minimum payments, I'm surprised they even did that. 
because tip, sure, you know, they, they'll whatever. But at the end of the day, if it was necessary to make a whole thing, you have to you have to be willing. There's a, a we have a, a famous saying: you have to be willing to trade your credit rating for saving your business. So in other words, the only way to get that done, I'm gonna, and there's a second question in there, is you have to withhold payments. That gets their attention. As long as you're paying minimum payments, they'll talk to you, they'll talk, it doesn't matter what they say. Um, and yes, the other question is this, absolutely, the merchant cash advances are incredibly difficult. They are brutal, they're collection machines. Actually, um, and so yes, they're all very different. Vendors are, established vendors are great to work with. Equipment lease companies are pretty good to work with because the last thing they want is they don't want that equipment back. Um, like um, hair salons or something like that. If let's say a hair salon has all their shampoo stations and stuff is what, who wants to buy that on a secondhand market? Like, you know, right. nobody's going to open a shampoo place and say, listen, look, I got it all used or a <laughs> dental equipment place. So that's all really negotiated. You know, you can't open up a dentist office with used furniture. It just doesn't look good, you know, a second on, you know. So the so equipment vendors, they're all easy to work with. Um, and I'll tell you what, I'll tell you also who's really reasonable is the SBA is very reasonable to work with. They're one of the easiest people to work with. They, they won't, you know, it was always one of these things. Like, this is another thing where you need to research and learn, you know, We've all been taught for the last 30 years that, you know, the SBA, they got you, they got your house. You got no, they're actually the easiest to work with. They want their 100 percent, but they'll give you time and time and time. So I think that answered that question. Um, and I know I was thinking about something awesome. else. Oh, um, this was a business credit card with the National Bank. Who do, yep. Yeah, you got to stop. And the only way to do it is to here's what you do. Well, but you have to be willing to trade your Remember, you have to be willing to trade. You would say, um, I'm paying everybody else. Everybody else worked with me. I'm not paying you. <laughs> I, right. You know, it's not, that's what, you know, you're also letting them, know, and remember in the car, in the letter, you're, you're letting them know in the business and in the, in the, in the cover letter, you're saying, you're secretly saying, look, I owe a hundred grand. You want in? I owe it to five creditors. I got a lawsuit. I'm going to, and then you don't, you never let them know who the other creditor is, but you just say, listen, I'm working, people are cutting deals, you want in, and what you're doing is you're giving the credit, you're giving a credit, the, uh, you're giving them reason to work with you, and you're making it easy for them to actually collect their money. Um, one other thing I just want to throw in, let me look at the time, okay. Um, you know, we look at, so this goes to the looking, turning around and looking at this from the creditor's perspective again. And this is great. You know, we, we look at American Express and you say, wow, what a company, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. What they really are, and all credit card companies are, is it's easy to lend money. They are collection machines. It's easy to lend money. The, Problem is getting it back. So they're all, you know, so it's almost, we, we need to look at these credit cards and things like that of what are they actually, you know, sure they, they fine tune who they're gonna lend to, but it's pretty easy. I mean, if I was gonna, you know, if I was said, hey, I got 10 grand here, you wanna borrow it? Well, it's easy for me not to have the money here. The problem is getting it back. So it's always, this whole thing is about turning it around and looking about it the other way. More questions, what do you got, Christian? Right. Let's see. Let's see. Um, don't have any here, but I do have one. While if anyone else um, has any questions, we would love for for you guys to submit them. But I have a question over uh, what is considered, what can be considered debt structuring? Can you consider, um, you know, working out deals with creditors that you don't have problems with once you've taken care of the vital ones? Right, so those were the, I believe it was the green and the yellow, though. I, I forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the should be's and the could be's. But right, I'm not right. understanding the question yet, Christian. Keep going. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of trying to work with, um, instead of focusing all just on debt, also working at, you know, 
lowering costs operationally in general. Right. And that would be outside of my expertise and gotcha. that, but it is totally within the expertise of your NJSBDC yep. counselor. I mean, that is, we only know, I'm like a horse with blinds. On. I know <laughs> one thing. Um, I know that's this. why you're so good at it. Yeah. I know one thing. I know this and I can answer almost any question. Um, oh, here we go. We've got a question. Awesome. Yes. So what about sole proprietors? I have no business debt, but with struggling with personal debt, and this is affecting my ability to build my business. I want to be honest. Well, first of all, this works for sole proprietors. Number The, the second question I would ask is, was any of the personal debt used to uh, build the business? Um, the third thing I would say is that you can use at the right, all the way at the beginning of this conversation, um, you can use these techniques to um, examine the personal debt. Um, I would also say that there are there are some good um, consumer count, credit counseling companies and consumer debt settlement companies out there. Um, but if the if the business was you if the if the if the debt was used for um, for the business, then it's it's a type of business debt. But she's saying she has no business debt. There are some good things out there. You can use this. Um, I would the first thing I would say is don't take any fast money from anywhere. Don't take anything. Um, talk to your bank. Um, I remember I'll get I'll give a personal. Let me give a personal story. And when um, a long long time ago. Um, when I first got out of college, I was in, you know, highfalutin, hot, fast living sales in New York City. And, um, and, and then the bottom fell out. <laughs> 1987. Um, everything was gone. And I was completely upside down and in debt. And in order to buy my first car, let me tell you what I had to do. And this is just, this, 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 this just go, goes back is that, um, I needed a car because the car I had was done. Um, and in order to buy the first car, I had to make some sacrifices and it was just to build credit. And it was, it was, um, it was brand new. It was for, I say, I got a real good deal on it. It was uh, $14,700 brand new and whatever, but I had to pay 50% down and the bank wanted 29% interest. Jeez. And I paid it for a couple, I paid it for about six months because I knew I was going to go back and build my credit and then be able to get rid of the whole thing. But that's, so what I'm answering that question is, is that, you know, you got to look at all sorts of different ways. So in other words, what I'm saying there is, is a consult, you might want to talk to a personal bank about a consolidation loan and then go after paying it back. I hope that answered the question. Gotcha, gotcha, perfect. Let's see. Any more questions, guys? We have five minutes left. Um, but if not, I think we would be good to go. Let's see, I'll give it another second here. Um, let's see. Okay, so I have a question that entered into the chat. Can you share the consumer credit unions? My mom is the legal business owner. I manage the business but her credit has taken a lot of hits in the last couple of years. I'm trying to leverage mine for business financing, but it has not built that much yet. I'd like to repair her credit if possible, but I don't want to spend thousands of dollars on repairing it. Um, so she's asking, is, the question really would almost go to who are the good ones? Is that what she's saying? I think that's what she's saying. Here's yes. what she should do. Ask her to send me an email directly and I'll answer the question directly and copy you guys. Gotcha. Because I'm going to give her, what I really should do is say, based on my experiences and get a couple more questions. These are, these are good. And they're because there are good companies. There really are. Awesome. awesome. So that, I think that's the best answer for that. But yeah, so, so here, you want to know, what the, and the other answer is this, it's the really big ones because they, the, the big ones are the good ones typically. Perfect. So I'm going to put a link in the chat for everyone 
um, this is where you would be requesting counseling. And obviously in the notes there, you're gonna request for Charles. I'm gonna put that there. Um, I sent that over to, let's see, actually I didn't send this over to everyone. All right, there you go. All right, so there's your link everyone. Um, I believe I saw someone raise their hand. Let me just get back to that. Let's see. See, Tamisha Woods. We have three minutes, Tamisha. Um, I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna open up the line actually. I'm gonna let you ask a question live. Hello. Uh, hello, Hi. Tamisha. Uh, good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, my question is regarding. Uh, I saw that uh, they're allowing for uh, like tech companies, for example, to um, write off um, um, like uh, losses and everything. Um, can you can you please speak a little to that? Um, you know, in regards to uh, you know debt management. Right. Charles, do you have an answer for that's, that? Yeah, that goes to you, Christian. That is one yeah. of the first bullets you put up. Gotcha. That's yeah. So, Remember, I got blinders on. <laughs> so, uh, Tamisha, we have actually a specialized team that's going to be able to help you um, with these types of grants and loans. Um, I also have blinders on. I'm marketing <laughs> right here. Anything on the left or right, I don't see. But um, yeah, we do have a team over at the NJSPDC that's specifically for that and that could help you. I'm going to drop that into the chat right now as well. I think uh, it's but, the first bullet you put up, Christian. Like, you remember one at the, the headlines at the very first day yep, of your yep. presentation? Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah. I, I was having some trouble uh, getting into the presentation at first. So. Oh, really? Thank okay. Thanks for uh, providing it in the chat. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. So go ahead in the chat. So I dropped that link there where it says njspdc.com slash request dash counseling. So that's the best link that you can go to. Um, again, keep in mind, our services are no cost. They're provided by the SBA and partners. So um, we're able to help you guys. All right. So we have one more question, but we have one more minute. Let's see if we can take this one. Um, oh, okay, this is pretty simple. What is the name of Charles' business? If we would like to work with him as I do not live in New Jersey. So I'm, I, I can actually, I'm typing it in. So we have um, the formal name of the company is Corporate Turnaround and the web, a great website that's a kind of in your, Christian, you would appreciate this. It's, a, it's an in your face marketing Straight Answers website is don'tdeclare.com. Awesome. One word. I'm going to send this right now. Nice. D-O-N-T-D-E-C-L-A-R-E.com. And of course, there's no apostrophe. And that refers to don't declare bankruptcy until you ex examine your options. I do like it. I do like that URL. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. All right. So it's, it's one o'clock. I think we've answered... Um, all questions here. Again, I dropped the link into the chat. If you have any more questions, you could speak with a business consultant in private um, on your own time. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay. So our next event is with Tim Peter and you're gonna learn best practices to compete online. So if you're trying to take your business online or you already have your business online, how are you gonna compete with all these all these competitors, you have Amazon, you have Walmart, you know, you have uh, big box retailer, retailers, the clothing giants, you know, Fashion Nova. How, how are you going to compete with these giants? So next week, that's what we're going to teach you how to do. That said, remember, NJSBDC has helped over 13,000 plus small businesses grow. No cost business consulting, training and events starting at zero dollars, just like this one and exclusive resources, which we're going to send after that survey. Um, again, get started. I dropped a link into the chat, njsbdc.com slash request dash counseling. That is it for today. Thank you so much, Charles.
Thanks, Thanks. 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 Greg. I really appreciate it. Have you got it. Time. Appreciate your time as well. Everyone have a great day and um, have a good weekend too. See ya. Thank you.